If you argue that evil is evidence there is not a God, you must also admit that good is evidence there is a God. Now think about that logically. Um, you can't have it both ways. You can't argue for the negation of a thing, a good God, by the existence of evil, unless you also argue for the thing itself, a good God, by the existence of good. Because you're implying, well, God can't exist, or at least the good God can't exist, because of all this evil. Okay, but then every time you see good, if you're using evil as the negation of God, wouldn't good be evidence that there is a God? Is there good in the world? Now this may be something that we, we, uh, we really overlook because we have a very diminished doctrine. Um, I, well, I would say we, we fail to understand the true meaning of common grace. A lot of people aren't even familiar with the term, but again, I come back to this doctrine of common grace, and I would encourage you, if you've not given thought to common grace, and you can actually have whole courses in theology where common grace is never mentioned, because we're, we're, we're going for the big ones. We're going for justification. We're going for grace, but we're, we're going to go for special grace, or you know, redeeming grace, saving grace, but we're not going to be talking about common grace. But think this one is huge, and it's huge in relating to unbelievers because it fails to give people enough credit and actually God enough credit that He does good in the world and that it's pretty remarkable. And this hit me when I was... Uh, Doing uh, when I was researching my book, If God is Good, which is a big theodicy, of, um, you know, dealing with the problem of good and evil. And then I've got another one called The Goodness of God, uh, that's a much uh, smaller book. And I've got 90 Days of God's Goodness, which is a devotional uh, that is on the same problem. So this is kind of my philosophy. I write big books, and then medium-sized books, often devotional, then small books, and then often booklets, because I'm trying to, all this research I've done, I want to reach as many people as I can reach. So I try to target it to different people. But on, when, I, when I was writing the original one, the big one, uh, I was thinking about the do, what we call the doctrine of depravity. <clears throat> and... And my wife said, Randy, okay, if, if we are all sinners by nature, and she says, and I fully believe we are, and we're wicked, and, and there's a Genesis 6 scenario here with every thought and the evil, and read Romans 3. I mean, if you want to get depressed, read Romans 3, and you know, everything about us is bad. Even the term worthless is used of us. And it's just like, oh my word, how bad can it get? But, but what Nancy said was, um, so that being the case, why isn't every city in our country full of thousands of Jack the Rippers? That is a great question. What do you think the answer to that is? Because is it because we're really not that sinful? Is it because the good outweighs the bad and there's more, and that's why there's not very many of those serial, murderous serial killers? You'd think there were more than there are if you watch television and you watch the dramas. You'd think that they're everywhere. But if you actually, they're not. Why aren't they? That's one sin. So many different sins. Yes. Countless different sins. Okay? Because the Holy Spirit is still here with us. So the church. Mm -hmm. But when the Holy Spirit is taken with the church, maybe evil will be more intense. So the restraining work of the Holy Spirit, restraining evil and actually promoting good. Is God using unbelievers to do good things in our world, in our country? Yeah. Well, when people go and they build a park in a, a neighborhood, an urban context, and they, they all get together and they work and they contribute money and they develop, is that a good thing? 
Well, sure, that's a good thing. Yeah, and you could say, well, what is, how does that affect eternity? It's just, uh, you know, a dead, it's just a little cul-de-sac of human good works or whatever. But you know what? Um, I'm grateful. You know, again, so I live in Oregon, and it's pretty crazy politically and in other ways. But I really like taking a bike ride on the Springwater Corridor Trail, and it's beautiful and tax money including mine is used to pay for this and there's just beautiful things there's creatures in the water and de deer will come out and all of these different you know is this a good thing that people decided they wanted to beautify parts of our city and then people enjoy them and aren't they looking at god's creation whether they know it or not and there's a lot of good out there and shouldn't God get credit for that good? It, the, you know, sometimes I think we think as if the only good that's really out there in the world is uh, missionary work. You know, or some missionary work's wonderful. I'm all for missions. I love missions. But it's God's doing a lot more than that. I mean, nothing could be more important than that. And, and certainly feeding the hungry and helping the poor. Does it ever strike you as it's interesting that rock bands who used to be known for only for debauchery are like in the last 15, 20 years have been concerned about the problem of world hunger and they're taking like offerings and they're actually taught, you know, and personally helping. And now, is that going to win? their way to heaven without Jesus? Of course not. But I'd rather... What about Bill Gates? Do I agree with everything Bill Gates is giving money to? No, he gives money to Planned Parenthood. I've also been sued by Planned Parenthood for having a prayer, uh, day of prayer in the city of Gresham and showing up for this day of prayer when the ACLU filed a suit against us so that we couldn't pray uh, on this particular property that day. So, I'm not a huge fan of the ACLU, but the ACLU has done a lot of good. My word, don't ever put down the ACLU categorically when you consider what was done for the civil rights movement by the ACLU. So don't, you know, but, but my point is that, yeah, he's giving money to Planned Parenthood. He's also giving money to lots of good things. And sometimes I could think of some better things, but the thing is, you can say what you want about Bill Gates, but this isn't by his way to heaven, but I'd sure rather that he help poor and needy people and get clean water in wells in Africa and Warren Buffett calling together all of these billionaires and challenging them to give away their first billion dollars and let's, let's, you know, common grace. I, I saw, I saw uh, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett talking about their giving like a couple of little schoolboys. I mean, they were just like delighted, laughing, giggling, almost just being silly at the pure delight of it. Doesn't that just confirm what the Bible says? I mean, Jesus said, it is more well, it's translated, unfortunately, blessed to give than to receive. It's the Greek word makarios. It means more happy-making. It is more happy-making. It will bring you more joy, more gladness, more merriment, more happiness to give than to receive. Can unbelievers discover that? Yes, they can. You ever seen unbelievers that have very good family relationships? I mean, just like, wow, they love each other. And then you see believers that uh, tragically don't. And, and I'm not trying to judge anybody with that, but I'm just saying, there's a lot of good out there, and it's not just among Christians, and it's not just in Christian work. So let's give God credit for that. You're using badness, evil, as an argument against him. Why wouldn't you argue? If evil must come from somewhere, well, good must come from somewhere. 